humans are social beings. And throughout our evolutionary history, the one thing that has enabled us to live together is trust. We trust each other to tell the truth. In this series, we're exploring moments in history that involve deception. And we're asking, are these the biggest lies ever told? In this episode, we'll be looking at the fabled weapons of mass destruction that were given to us as the reason for the invasion of Iraq in 2003. I'm joined today by my colleague, Professor Eric Herring, who's a professor of world politics at the University of Bristol. Maybe you can provide us with a bit of context about the weapons of mass destruction and the lead up to the invasion. Sure. Uh, after the 9-11 attacks, a lot of Americans became obsessed with the idea that uh, terrorists might be supplied with weapons of mass destruction mm -hmm. by someone like Saddam Hussein, who was the dictator then ruling Iraq. And they demanded that Iraq get rid of its weapons of mass destruction programs, which it did have at one point. One of the problems that the British and American governments had is that they had very little intelligence that said that Iraq had anything meaningful or was particularly threatening. And yet they wanted to invade Iraq to get rid of that government. So they had to make it sound as scary as possible and as certain as possible. And so they came up with this claim that Iraq could launch weapons of mass destruction with, within 45 minutes of the order being given. Now, they actually had very little to support that, but they made it sound very certain and highly threatening. Yeah, I remember that 45-minute claim from way back, and uh, it wasn't the only thing that turned out to be false, because once the Allies invaded Iraq and they searched the entire country, they didn't find any weapons of mass destruction. So the entire reason that we were given for the invasion, for the launch of this war, turned out to have been false. And looking back on this and looking at how flimsy the evidence appeared, even at the time, I can't help but think that I've been lied to. Do you agree that that's a legitimate feeling to have? Within the government, they were very keen not to be seen to be lying, something that they were stating blatantly to be true that they knew would be proven to be false. And I think it's quite striking that they were concerned to ensure that whatever they said, they could roughly justify afterwards. Now, to you and me, it's just a, a fancy way of lying, but I think it's important to understand that there, there, there are other forms of deception, and by leaving things out and exaggerating and distorting things, you can still have just as an important impact. That's very interesting because psychologically and cognitively, we know that from the public's point of view, it doesn't matter whether you're deceiving them by omission, by exaggeration, by spinning, or by outright lying. Mm. And the data support that. So for example, in the United States, uh, around a third of Americans believe that weapons of mass destruction had been found in Iraq mm. for up to five years after the invasion and after it became clear that there weren't any weapons of mass destruction. And they continued to believe this for years past the point when it became a bipartisan consensus in Washington, official government policy, that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. They knew they wouldn't get the war they wanted if they told the public exactly what they knew. It's not the intelligence was wrong, it was that they misrepresented the intelligence as much more certain and much more threatening than it actually was. Because mm. if you said to the public, listen, we know almost nothing, and they seem to have almost nothing, and it's not very scary, but let's have a war anyway, the public would have gone, you're out of your mind. So one of the things we know about human cognition is that people tend to believe things that they hear over and over again. And the remarkable thing was that in the lead up to the invasion, if you turned on the TV or the radio or opened the newspaper, all you heard about was weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction over and over again. So it's not surprising that people even now believe that those weapons of mass destruction have been found when in fact they never existed at the time. 
the public were definitely deceived. And you can see that from the internal Foreign Office records, the government records, where you have uh, officials talking about how can we obscure the fact that Iraq is not more uh, dangerous than other places. You have another official saying, how can we hoodwink the public about the, the production numbers? So there was a conscious, deliberate attempt to deceive. So what can we learn from the fabled weapons of mass destruction? We found in our research that people who were skeptical of the true reason underlying the invasion of Iraq, they were far better able to differentiate fake news from stories that ultimately turned out to be true. So if there's one thing we should learn, it is to be skeptical. So stay with us and tune in again for the next episode of The Biggest Lies Ever Told.